Welcome to a new series here on Shipping TV. We're aboard JJ Pryor's ship Mark Pryor on the spring morning of 13th of April 2015. The time is just coming up to around 7 a.m., which means that it's high water at the ballast key at Fingering Ho in Essex. The ship is loaded with 280 tonnes of sand and stone, around 15 lorries worth if you like, and as soon as the hatch covers are secure, we'll be underway. Years. That's how long young Derek has been working at this wharf, and he seems pretty happy with his lot. Time to move. Yes, good morning to you. Uh, Paul Control from the Mark Pryor with the voyage details, if you have a pen. Right, you must be the only one there that has. Yeah, anyway, we're just leaving Colchester bound for Brewery Wharf, Deptford. And POB is 3, draft 2.9, ETA Graves in 15.45, and the departure details will be 21.15 today, yeah, uh, persons on board 3, draft 1.9, bound Colchester. The mate drops the head rope and the spring back onto the quay and then the skipper puts her astern and she moves back against the stern rope. Unlike highly manoeuvrable small ships like tugs with azimuth thrusters or twin screws, Mark Pryor has a single screw, so knowing how to use that available power combined with the rudder and rope work is essential when moving in confined areas or close to other vessels. The bow swings out well clear of Bert Pryor up ahead and we're able to cast off and depart. Time to learn a little about Mark Pryor's history and life so far. What would you call her? Would you call her a coaster, a barge? Well, she started off in her earlier life. For Crescent Shipping, she was called the Lope. And she was classed as a coaster in those days. And she used to run across to Rotterdam, Antwerp, Brussels, that sort of near continental work. But then, uh, sort of the, the, you know, the ships, the coasters became bigger, larger. So uh, she sort of um, basically just started doing uh, Thames Estuary work and then classed as a barge. So in answer to your question, she started off as a coaster and she's uh, ended up a barge. You know, but that's the market that did that. She was uh, in a day when she was built. She was quite, um, you know, she carries 280, 290 tons. And uh, in those days, you know, with the freight rates and everything, made it beneficial for the she, shipping. She was a decent little ship. She was, you know, a busy little ship. She's been a busy little ship all her life, actually. She's about 2.8 draft, loaded, yep. and uh, empty. And she's uh, 1.8, 1.9 draft. We don't carry any ballast. There's just a four-peak tank that we, we fill up so that we can see over the bow when she's empty. Otherwise, she's, she's uh, stuck up in the air. She's a flat boat boat, so she's, well, that's what they're built for, really, sitting on dry up, drying out berths. Like um, our berth up at Deptford, for example, that's up the creek, that dries out completely, you know, you 
and low water you want our ships to get in there. But, um, yeah, so uh, she's still still running strong. You know, she's uh, getting on a bit now. She's built at 69, and uh, she's had a hard life, especially on this sand and gravel run, you know, non-stop. So, uh, but she's still she's still um, earning her keeps, shall we say? And she's working seven days a week. Yep, she works seven days a week, non-stop. Unless, of course, uh, you know, it's really bad weather or something, then we have to stop. Grab discharge, which is also quite uh, tough on the ship, exactly. Uh, but uh, she's sort of built for it. She's got like a trimming, a trimming hat. She hasn't got uh, frames. It's like a box. Made a wooden box out of it, so uh, it's easier for discharge. Steel ceiling. Originally, she was built with a with a wooden ceiling floor in the hold, but. Uh, grab discharge all the time and makes it a lot more easier with the steel ceiling of course. As we near the river's entrance to the North Sea, Peter sets up the wheelhouse for the mate to take over. My drag, she's all yours. His name is Martin, but he's better known as Fraggles or Frags, and he doesn't mind at all. A ship of this size only carries a crew of two, so responsibility for the engine's well-being and the ship's mechanical systems comes down to the skipper. Every day he carries out the routine checks and servicing jobs, calling in a specialist if something serious goes wrong. I'm delighted to say I'm on the ration strength for the day and here's breakfast made by the mate, eaten by me and the skipper. That was you! That wasn't me skipper, that was all you. No, 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 you've eaten it all, I'm not. That's why I'm so petite. And that's us, punching against the tide now for a few hours on our way up towards the Thames. We'll be back with part two soon as we get to and sail up the Capitals River. <laughs>